All right, welcome. <laughs> 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 that was that's the, the way first, to start the first word of the show <laughs> classic oh it's the only way to start the show welcome everyone to the MMA depressed us with welcome me Zane Simon. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and my co-hosts Connor Rebush and Phil McKenzie we are here once again to watch the worst fights that we possibly can and uh, as always, with an eye towards something, something really terrible, something that's fun and bad, and then something that was just a big disappointment. This week, our disappointment is the inevitably, unquestionably disappointing Woodley versus Thompson two from UFC two hundred nine. Preceding that, we will have. Uh, Babalu Sabral versus Maury Smith at UFC 28. We're dig- trying to dig back into the past a little more, find some of those ugly, terrible grinding fights that we know existed a couple of decades ago and have tried to blot from our collective memory. Yeah, while while searching, this is how far uh, like uh, old classic MMA n- nostalgia has has gone. That while doing my Google search for worst pride fights, um, somebody said. Honestly, not that many come to mind, and that's crazy because they had so many fights. And I was like, like the first twenty Pride events were awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> there were so many bad fights. There were so many slow, awful fights where nobody knew how to pass guard, and they would just spend six minutes sort of pummeling each other in the belly lightly. Like there were a lot of bad fights in early MMA. So there's, there's, we we have confidence. There's so much more for us to to mine. Yeah. And then we'll be opening up the night, or opening up the show, rather. Not the night, it's not night for, well, it's night for Phil, but whatever. Phil's in one of those crazy foreign lands. Um, we'll be opening up the show with Jared Haman versus Rodney Wallace at UFC 111, our good bad fight, which won fight of the night that night. And if my own memory of Jared Haman's career serves me correctly, this cannot help but be hilarious. I'm going to assume that Jared Mann gets hit in the chin and looks like a giraffe being hit with a sniper's bullet. <laughs> yep. It's usually but what happens survives. in the Jared Mann fight. <laughs> he survives. Yeah. Unlike in several of his later UFC fights where it was just <laughs> the giraffe getting shot. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's our lineup for today. As always, you can find all the videos on Fight Pass. That's where we're finding them. And cue them up right along with us. We'll be starting at the beginning of each video. Um, so we'll count you down to the video start. Somebody smarter than me, uh, potentially, uh, recently recommended that I actually pull up a laptop over here and then I live stream the videos to each of us hmm. during it so we didn't actually have to sync up with each other. Um, but I have to make sure that it doesn't show on screen because that would get us shut down. We'll figure that out for future episodes. Yeah. And it would also probably mean that we couldn't actually see each other when we talk, which I mean, looking at you guys is half the reason why we're we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your dear friends, Kuntner Rebush and Phil McC- <laughs> <laughs> Your dear your dearest pals. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about and I never said anything like that. No. No, there's no record of that. No, yeah. you can't call Phil's homeland a crazy foreign country, by the way, because it's one of two countries that will actually tolerate your your potty mouth after the, we kick you out of the U.S., U.K. and Australia. That's the only place you can go with that kind of language. Well, the rest of the world just wouldn't understand me, so that's fine. <laughs> they just beat you for looking the way you do. They that's would just true. kill you on sight. All right. On that note, let's kick things off with uh, Jared Haman versus Rodney Wallace. Let's do it. And uh, starting in three, two, one, go. Somehow, the the discussion before the episode is always fun. And then we always seem to start off with something that is hilariously funny because it relates to what we were saying before. And then by the time we start the first fight, I feel so demoralized. <laughs> <laughs> My morale has already been crushed. We've only been on the call for like three minutes. Uh, I, I, I would hope that I could get like rig up one of those uh, 
Ghostbusters machines, you know, that, uh, what's his name? Um, now, oh, fuck, Bill Murray was using it to test, like, psychic response sure. in the beginning. Yeah. Or, yeah. like, maybe I could just, like, give you the occasional electric shock to provide negative yep. stimulus. Uh, is it, in this scenario, are you trying to get in Phil's pants? Yeah, well, that's part <laughs> okay. of what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Obviously. You're shocking also, me and in- Phil. Were all Jared Haman's like highlights there from his fight with like? <laughs> I watched Sorry, the highlight. Where he turns and looks at the camera, he's going like this, and he's yes. just. <laughs> I'm glad you saw that because we were talking over it. But there were these highlights that were just him getting slapped around in these hideous, ugly exchanges, and then he looks at the camera with so such a smug facial expression. <laughs> Like that, like yeah, you just saw some real shit. It <laughs> like like those, those blue steel face. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was blue steel. Oh, well, why does he? It why was. Why did I just realize that Jared Haman looks exactly like Henry Hooft? He does. Yeah, wow. He looks so much like Henry Hooft. Maybe it is Henry. Hooft. Maybe like that's Henry Hooft's dark secret. He had to change his name <laughs> so no one knew he was Jared Haman all these years. <laughs> He was just he was just pioneering a new striking style in the UFC, <laughs> undercover. He was like, "This, this is going to be the one." Oh man! Like, his giraffe Kwando is going to be his, his like <laughs> his new revolutionary kickboxing style. Meanwhile, a man's but, like, I'm of- amazed that they managed to they managed to find like highlights, and they were all from like the Gustafsson fight, <laughs> and that fight lasted like forty seconds. They must have. They must have Taken in like, and uh, but and like it was, it was like Gustafsson going like this guy's, this guy's really aggressive. Like, what's he doing? What's he doing? And then just like hits him once, and that's it. Like as far as I can recall. <laughs> so like all the like the first, the first like thirty seconds of that fight, they yeah. just they that was a man's entire well, highlight. They, they have cameras on every post, so they just got all the different angle cuts Angles of, of the, the same of the first game. exchange. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I thought it was like it was like a ten second sequence that they broke up into four two second clips, but like they they edited it so it looked like it was a montage of a longer fight. <laughs> like really, only half a second has elapsed between each of the highlights. Uh, All right. He so looks less like Henry Hooft with his hat off, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, it's like when uh, Junior Dos Santos takes his hat off, he looks like a completely different person. Well, that, that especially ever since Junior Dos Santos became the Brazilian Mister Clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the bald the balding look really like it is kind of shocking how much it changes with the hat on or off. He looks very boyish with the hat on. Yeah. <clears throat> so remind me, what are some notable Rodney Wallace fights? Because honestly, I don't remember any of his UFC fights. Uh like none of them really come to mind. Yeah, let me go. Look. Rodney Wallace is one of those dudes that I mostly think of as like. When I see him on some other regional light heavyweights record as a win, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So, Rodney Wallace is all right. Okay, yeah. He beat OSP. There you go. Like, back when in a really, really early fight. And other than that, I don't think he's actually beaten anyone notable. Like, at all over his entire career. Kaleeb Starnes. Yeah, he's been beaten by a lot of guys. He's one of those, yeah, like Zane said, he's a guy that people beat to get a, a UFC veteran name on their... So he's been been beaten by Mamed Kaledov, Phil Davis, Brian Stan, uh, Luis Carne, uh, Misha Sirkonov. Yeah, he's that dude. But he beat OSP back in the day. Uh, probably like in like OSP's first fight, I would guess. Hmm. That's quite a lot of. Um, Let's have a look. It was his of... first fight. But well, there you go. Yeah. Rodney Wallace can only beat the most beatable of all the names you just mentioned if it's his first fight. I'm sorry, Rodney. Yeah, you know, it's it, it, it's the it's the taxing cost of fighting with that much that much beach muscle going on. Yeah, he is uh he is looking quite quite puffy here. He's he's looking like a bodybuilder. <clears throat> yeah. So this was on this was yeah UFC 111. So this is uh, Hardy Saint Pierre, which is a welcome reminder of like the power of the UFC hype machine back in the day because and sort of the kind of general 
Darth of like technical analysis and <laughs> in the sort of fandom and so on, in that yeah. people thought that Dan Hardy could beat GSP. <laughs> and like the Dana White said, Dan Hardy striking is, I quote, perfect. And people believe, and there were some people out there who <laughs> believed him that Dan Hardy was an amazing knockout artist and he could just catch GSP and put him out. Despite oh, it, the fact it, it, that like Dan whole... Hardy did not knock many people out. It, it, it's the whole, you know, the the Jack Slack ranting during Mayweather McGregor about like why he started doing any fight analysis in the first place was just completely because of the whole idea of like mystical angles where people would just yeah. throw it terms out there. The, that people use words like angles without ever bothering to define what they mean. Yeah. Is precisely why a technical analysis is interesting and useful. <laughs> because that kind of stuff is really it's really pernicious. Like it, it, it it's a, it's a such a huge logical fallacy that people just let themselves fall into all over and over. Not yeah. to be a Ben Shapiro type, but it really is kind of frustrating as a fight fan. Right. The heavyweight Paul champion the, heavy, the intellectual heavyweight champion of the world. Big is the ref. <laughs> Who, who's the heavyweight champion? Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's um, a little big. He's a little big for the division. But uh... so yeah, I mean, like a welcome reminder. This is a welcome reminder that this fight, that back in the day, this fight could win fight of the night in a fight in a card headlined by a fight as kind of one-sided, obviously one-sided. <laughs> As <laughs> as GSP um, as GSP Hardy, and it could get like however many views. How many how many views did how many like buys did this get? Probably like, like seven hundred thousand at least. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. That. This G- getting to GSP's glory days. So yeah, round one started like uh, yeah. thirty three seconds ago. By the way, yeah, we so didn't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Just it started stuff. with with Rodney Walls immediately tagging. Uh, Jared Haman, like like a baby giraffe, his head Ooh, really goes yep. all around. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. I'm into this now. Ronnie Wallace yeah. is p- putting it on Henry Hooft. This is why Henry Hooft changed his name. Like, yeah, yeah, and the shape of the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got pounded Ronnie out of shape. How like how I always people waste so much energy on these things like that elbow's not landing. How effective is that really? <clears throat> I guess yeah, it's as think... effective as like half climbing somebody from the side <laughs> <laughs> when you weigh like probably two hundred and forty pounds rehydrated of muscle. Yeah. A man tried to just tried to knee Wallace over his own shoulder and then was like, <laughs> wait. I can't do that. Oh my god, Wallace! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my god! Jared, Jared Hayman has no idea what defense is. No. Oh my god. Oh lord. No, this is a this is a classic box car home run performance. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think Jared Hayman may be the first fighter that made me. Like, you start using the term sky guy striking, like wacky inflatable tube man striking. <laughs> Is that what they're called? Yeah. Sky guys? Yeah, they're called sky guys. Oh my gosh. That's so much better. It makes them sound like an enemy in an in a early Mario game. It does. Yeah. <laughs> but he has the absolute definition of the wacky inflatable tube man yes. striking Absolutely. style. And the great thing is, is that he is he is also incredibly tired now, like <laughs> less than halfway, like about halfway through the first round. But like you just know, he's not as tired as Rodney Wallace is going to be in about like. Rodney Wallace right now seconds. is thinking like, "Dear God, I have thirty seconds left to finish this. I am so exhausted right now." Oh, you just bell. saw him get kind of flopped by that wizard. Yeah. And that was... <laughs> and now he's backing up with I was the like, arm down. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. My, he is. <laughs> a crouch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know how that head kick worked or, like, was thrown. That oh, man. He just... Wallace dipped it's right really into it, you see... Yeah, 
It's where you see a head kick and a right hand land exactly at the same time, knocking yeah. over both guys. <laughs> it's like a man had both arms already thrown and was leaning backwards. It was like, okay, I'll throw the head kick too right now. And Wallace is just like, well, I guess he has to. I have to let him land one of these. Sky guy striking really does make sense. It really does. Just yeah. watched that sort of. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, in which D is learning to dance by imitating. Oh Sky yeah. Guy. And I can imagine, I just picturing Jared Haman doing that in the gym, like following the instructions of his teacher, basically just mimicking <laughs> the motions of this flailing. <laughs> flailing. <laughs> Well, they, yeah, they go in. You, you just see a man, like, you see him working and, like, waving around. You're like, what are you doing? You pan around, and it's just a wacky inflatable tube man inside <laughs> with, with gloves on. And it's like... Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Ronnie Wallace is done, right? Like, Yeah. The, we're, the, well, that's the, the thing. That He's still going. <laughs> he is still going to hit Jared Haman on the chin the man many more came. times. He just gave up back mount to get like put on his own back briefly. Just Look how be little because Rodney Wallace couldn't stop would would not <laughs> stop crawling on him. <laughs> Look, uh... Look how little Jared knows about clinch fighting. <laughs> he just like grabs the neck and desperately hopes he doesn't get hit in the chin. Oh man. Uh, that... round. The good thing That's about like, like high octane three, right? guys like What's that? So this is round yeah. three, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like the fry Takayama effect yeah. we're discussing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pure like ragdoll physics. I like the them. actual, like the the mechanisms of their of like their arms are just not connected to like to any other part of of the re reactions of the rest of their yeah. body, like the the striking parts. The the, the quap era of UFC fights. Yeah. And the great oh. thing about guys like Rodney Wallace is that they have no, they have no, like, lower octane moves to throw. It's like, they just, they'll just be incredibly tired for a bit. And you're like, okay, I got a bit of, got a bit of gas back. Got a bit of gas back. <clears throat> I've got to slam him! Or, like, you know, I'll just be like, or just do like a, the most tired looking wheel kick imaginable. Like, I, I'll be, I will be shocked, shocked if there is no, if he doesn't throw a wheel kick somewhere in this fight. And it will be, you know, one of those ones where he takes like four steps to turn around. <laughs> I swear, Jared Haman looks like if, if Henry Hooft, instead of becoming a professional <laughs> trainer to fighters, he just like got divorced at 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. looks like, he looks like divorced dad Henry Hooft. He really but, does. He maybe he's just playing he softball. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh he's just Henry God. Hooft from an alt alternate timeline. <laughs> yeah, in which he just wants his kids back, but he's not at all bad enough, <laughs> badass enough to make it happen. Oh God. In the meanwhile, Wallace, he he really looks like. He looks like somebody who grew up watching all the early era UFCs and just like took that as like the core lesson of how to fight going forward. Yes. It is yeah. pure bicep yeah. curls in the squat rack MMA. If if Alawale yeah. Bamboj didn't watch Bruce Lee movies and instead just watched like UFC three over and over, this is what his style would look like. Didn't grow up wrestling but idolized Mark Coleman. <laughs> yes. Yes, precisely. So, I mean, Jared Haman, his grappling has looked pretty awful for most of this fight, but he keeps <laughs> finding... Oh, my God. He just Never fell mind. off. He just yeah, he, he was, like, heading towards Mount, cutting <laughs> cutting to Mount, and he just kind of fell off. He is beating the shit out of Rodney Wallace from his guard, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's just smashing him with elbows. Rodney yeah. Wallace is so tired. <laughs> He's like, please just let me rest here. Give me a minute. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> that takedown. Oh my god. Look, see what I mean? Look at Rodney Wallace's body language. He's like, yeah, please no, just yeah. let me put my body weight on you for a minute. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty heavy. Like like that's what these muscles are good for right now. 
It's I'm pretty so hard to imagine a guy who's that bulked up has that much trouble maintaining top control. Yeah. He's like a he's like a like a chicken breast when you read on the bag that it like they 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 inflated it with like with like saline solution to make it look plumper and more delicious. That's Rodney Wallace. Yeah. He's not actually as strong as he looks. He's just been inflated. Or as heavy, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is this is the inflatable fight. Yes. Which, yes. The bounty castle or the sky guy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. When these uh, children, the mo oh modes of children's entertainment meet, only one can come out the victor. <laughs> I think, I think, like, bad grappling might even be more fascinating to look at than bad striking. Like, just it watching is. you guys roll over each other over and over and over again. And what? just no control, but lots and lots of hugging. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, nice body shot. Ooh, two hard shots right to the uh, spleen area. To, to the lunch muscles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how Jared, a man, gave a little bit of bouncy footwork as he pulled away from the exhausted guard of Rodney Wallace. <laughs> he was like lighting Also his notable feet. being like the first time in this fight that Gerard... Ger Jared Haman has moved backwards and hasn't like <laughs> skidded and almost fallen over because he's done that almost every time he's done the like Bambi on ice thing <laughs> like he tries to get out of range and he's like whoa, whoa. Uh, it looks time. like if if Jake uh, Shields had specialized in kickboxing <laughs> like this is as, this is as good as Jake Shields could have gotten if he really wanted to be a better kickboxer. Next next time he gets back up to his feet, his all four of his limbs are just gonna start slowly sliding out on the mat, <laughs> like the comedy cut. For he gets anything. he gets put he gets put in turtle, but his hands and feet all just slide away from each other. <laughs> he just like starts sliding away from uh, a man or from Wallace across the mat, like. There's no ice there or anything. It's just still like. Speaking <laughs> of there. bad. Speaking of bad, oh, bad like Ronnie Bambi Wallace. MMA. Have you guys seen that? I can't remember what it is. It's like Legacy Fight or something. I can't remember what its name is. It's some obscure regional promotion. They had it on like a bright yellow mat, and they had it outdoors, and it started pouring with fucking oh, yes, rain. Yes. It is amazing. I wish I can't find it anymore, but it is one of the most the incredible. It, it was one of the pro What's fight that? league event. It's the, it's the uh, world series of fighting rebrand, the recent world series of fighting rebrand. It might be, it's quite old. Oh, it's old. Okay. It's, I thought this but, was, yeah. Cause it happened recently too, just like in the past six months where they, uh, tried to, they were going to do a pro fight league event at a, uh, at a racetrack and they delayed the race. It was going to be after the race, but they delayed the race due to rain. So they just held the fight event first in the rain. <laughs> like this one is incredible because there's no traction on the mat. So it's literally people trying to fight and they are just like, <laughs> They are literally slipping all over the mat and like throwing at each other and almost falling over with every single punch. It is one of the most comical things I have ever fucking seen in this sport. It's that's always great in like you you see that you see that a lot too. I don't know if you still do as much, but in like really, really low level uh UK MMA events where they would, you know, invariably be held in like the smokiest, shittiest pub that anybody could find. And yeah. the mat would just be like this, just absolute. It would like it would reflect the lights because it was just immediately get so sweaty immediately. Yeah, just look like a trash bag laid over some plywood. It's just a, it's just a tarp. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So apparently, I'm like sorry, the I'm UFC sorry, mat so, uh, is really brutal. Apparently, it's just yeah. it's oh. just like sandpaper. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of sticky and gritty. Yep. Spray some weird shit on it. Yeah, it's very sticky. And then it's also, like, not in any way giving in any way. It's just, like, you know, four sheets of 
plywood with some like really sticky or really tacky surface over it so that if you get slammed on it, it's just, you know, it's like getting slammed on a hardwood floor or something. I'm pretty sure in the background, Mike Gold, I just caught Mike Goldberg like 20 seconds ago talking and then looking over his shoulder. And I think like Anthony Pettis was sitting behind him and like he oh, caught yeah. his eyes and then he felt really uncomfortable for a while. <laughs> And like kept looking over his shoulder to see if Anthony was still looking at him. <laughs> I like uh, oh my all of a third round no. comeback that I would not have thought he had in him. No, no, I'm, I uh, did not. I was thinking like, how did this get fight in the night? We're, Wallace isn't getting up from this. Oh, oh my god! Oh it's man! Last burst. It's all he has left. <laughs> Even <laughs> Rodney Wallace can get up when when the man he's fighting is filled with air. <laughs> <laughs> I've you actually been imagining that uh, Jared Haman is divorced Henry Hooft, but also that Rodney Wallace is the man his wife left him for. <laughs> that's why they're fighting. <laughs> this is like a Kmart parking lot, and that's why they're fighting. I don't know if you saw it, too, in those freeze frames. The look on Wallace's face when he was throwing those punches was absolutely the look of a man who's just like, this has to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> just like... <laughs> The most like, come on, just, <laughs> just so much desperation. Yep. Yeah. Wait, I don't even. I blacked out. How did Rodney Wallace end up on the bottom again? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I mean, they're pretty much just falling over. Like, yeah. <laughs> he got a takedown oh, like ten. Stand up because that that's where we are in this fight. It needs. Yeah. More... <laughs> it's not not enough happening on the ground. All right, Rodney Wallace knows. He's not going to get another chance. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, <laughs> oh, and he tried to throw a clinch knee and fell over. He tried to throw a clinch knee on a guy like a foot taller than him. Oh, boy. This was a good choice, Phil. <laughs> it's a real winner of a fight. Fight of the night. <laughs> Somebody in, in the comments is telling us it's it's a King of the Cage event that you're thinking of. An, yeah. It might yeah, be. I've seen, the yellow canvas is King of the Cage. So, But yeah. I have also seen like Muay Thai events where it rained. It's not, I've, I, it's, it happens quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Because uh, they do outdoor events. But I have also seen uh, Muay Thai events where like the guys can't stay standing because they're just falling all over the slippery canvas. Look at, Rodney Walls almost just sat up. Yeah, like he he didn't have any technical attempts to get away there, and he almost made it. I've got to say, like, it seems like a cruel thing to say, but I kind of wish Jared Haman had an amazing chin, just because, like, I could just I'm like, this is a horrible thing to say, but I really like watching Jared Haman get punched, like, <laughs> just because it's really funny, like. I, well, if he had uh, it, it, chin, then he would just be, uh, you know, um, oh, Patrick Cummins. Uh, true, but like, no, I, I don't know if I've ever it's seen anyone too. It's, it's like, like true, react like, to, to getting yeah. hit like that, like Jared Haman does. And yeah, it's exactly, it's like when Stefan Struve gets knocked out, yeah. but he There's doesn't get knocked like, out. He just gets back up again. It's um, not morally justifiable, but... There is a certain slapstick element to that frame just getting knocked around that can't be denied. Like, there's something inherently funny about oh, man. And he almost slips over right at the end. Like, I, I will give it to them. They did, you know, they went it was at an it. amazingly active fight for a fight where both guys were dead tired two minutes in. 100%. Yeah. It was not a bad yeah. fight, like, in the sense that, I mean, it was certainly fun to watch. Oh well, yeah. yeah, it is a bad fight though. There was a lot but, of bad fighting yeah. in it, but yeah, there was a lot of it. So <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can't you can't accuse them of not giving everything in yeah. that fight. Every scrap of terrible technique they had in them, they summed it up and like, oh. there we go. <laughs> Can't wait for it. Here we come. Oh my god. <laughs> How is he still standing? His feet uh, oh, even under his body. Me. I don't even know what that submission could be from like. <laughs> <laughs> he's he was going for like a he was going for a crucifix. Yeah, yeah but he was, he was going, going for, for like crucifix, an Americana from his back. Yeah, he was going for an Americana yeah, from his back. 
Now yeah. in command Which, gets a crucifix on him. <laughs> it was like it was ba yeah, a crucifix with no legs, otherwise known as waiting for the other guy to just roll over so he's inside control. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Even after watching him fight for fifty minutes, I'm not convinced that Rodney Wallace has legs. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember seeing them once. Yeah, I mean, okay, I was I was mad that that fight got got fight of the night over like Bocek Miller, which is an incredible like technical Genuine. ginger slow foot slow grappling affair. Um, in when I first saw it, and I was because I was like you know just coming into being a irritating hipster fan. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, technical grappling, but on the other hand, you know. In pure entertainment terms, this I mean, fight was pretty, was pretty remarkable. Well, and, and you got to think like, of it too in the terms of like, for dudes who were just never going to make that much money again in their entire careers, you got to be happy yeah, to you know, exactly. fight where they, they put everything that they could into it that they got paid a little more. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Probably the high point of their respective careers. May have been, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, fight of the night on a however many hundreds of thousands selling pay per view. Yep. You could also say that perhaps about Haman versus Kingsbury, which also won fight of the night, and also both guys burned out almost immediately after that fight. I kind of want to watch that. Yeah, we yeah. might have to. Jared, Jared and Haman <laughs> fights are great fights for meeting the good bad criteria because he was always like a hundred percent action all the time with zero yeah. idea of how to control any part of that action whatsoever. Who was uh who was the UFC heavyweight who had a bit of the Jared Haman effect? And it was not Stefan Struve. He uh, damn it, he had a fight like he got knocked out by Nogueira. Tall guy. Oh, you don't mean. Yeah, you don't mean the hairy dude, right? The incredibly talented hairy dude. Oh, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Dave... Um, uh, Herman. Dave Herman. Dave Herman. Herman. Dave Herman was yeah. also... It was also enjoyable to watch Dave Herman get hit. Oh, yeah. He also had yeah. some of that slapstick element built into his body. Yeah, I remember, like... Yeah, we should definitely watch one of his fights. But, like, I remember, like, Coach Mike saying... Dave Peewee Herman is one of the most naturally talented wrestlers. He uh, like and physically gifted guys that he's ever seen. Like yeah, well, Herman Herman was a prospect. Like he when he he just he just burned out. He was like a he was like yeah. a Brandon Vera almost of his era. People were like, "Ooh, this guy's got potential," and it just never yeah. turned into anything. Part of that's probably because the UFC I don't think really knows how. Still to this day, don't really know how to match prospects that well. Yeah, a lot of that. I think it was partially just that he was lazy. Really weird yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the kind of dude who gets who who gets brutally arrested roadside because he will not under any circumstances believe that he has to provide that he has to provide the officer with ID getting pulled over and like demanded that the police officer show him two forms of identification. Dave Dave Herman is it should not surprise anyone that Dave Herman is a "Am I being detained?" guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very much. <laughs> He's definitely that dude. All right, shall we? The brawl versus yeah. Smith. The brawl Smith. Yeah. Let's give this a go. Uh, UFC twenty eight, starting in three, two, one, go. So I have no memory of this. I have watched it at some point, like a decade ago. We watched a few clips of it to know that it met enough of our criteria to be... It's not starting for me, suddenly. Um, hmm. I don't know do why. Do you want to restart? It's Yeah, let's restart. Do so, we want to restart? Wait for them. Yeah. We'll yeah. Restart. We'll restart. Restart. Sorry. All right. Restart. Sorry. Video didn't play for me for whatever reason. Oh, starting in three, two... Hold on, two. hold on. Hold on, hold on. What? what? I, have to, I have to refresh my page. Oh, okay. You can just hit the back button at the bottom yeah it left. doesn't seem to be backing up all the way to the beginning but i guess i have to trust that it did okay okay oh, yeah it says 24 45 out of 24 40 whatever i'm not even gonna go into this with you guys anymore three two one go all right that time it started all right we're good we're good my the scrub bar did not go all the way back to the start and uh, gotcha what's that so this is you know an exceptionally young babaloo 
Only looking yeah. mildly as crazy as he would become. He looks a, a lot less like a like a dangerous bouncer. <laughs> he looks more like a I don't know, like a, a high school. Teen. He looks like a troubled teen right here. <laughs> yeah, he looks like the the edgy kid on the high school football team. It, it, this, he, he looks like the kid who get called who got called in for this episode of Bully Beatdown, and Maury yes. Smith is gonna like <laughs> yeah. teach him a lesson. He really does. Except it's gonna be like the Jake Shields episode of Bully Beatdown where he loses the striking portion oh, of. Oh, did that yeah. happen to Jake Shields? <laughs> yes. I, love how... I don't know if he lost, but he certainly didn't. He was one of the only guys. I think maybe he was just one of the only guys that just didn't finish the guy. I love yeah. that. I, I love the idea I can, that I can just imagine. I can just imagine like they get done with the Jake Shields. Like, you know, do you regret what you've done? And the guy's like, mm. just <laughs> vaguely irritating. Boy, look at the level of technical analysis on the screen right now. Hinato Babalu, good wrestler. Striker, good submissions. Yes, good <laughs> striker, good at submissions. All right, thank you, Eddie Bravo, or whoever provided those insights. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember an era when Babalu had a yeah. flat top. I know. He's got this like high and tight haircut going on. Like a, he, he was one of the first guys. Wasn't he one of the first guys in MMA to get like a throat tattoo? Probably, almost certainly. He looks, but currently at this stage, he looks like a. A guy who started fighting because he hates his army dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the look he's giving right now. Oh, whereas Maury Smith just looks like your army dad. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it looks like Babalu has Babalu has snuck out to the uh, to see like the Marilyn Manson concert. <laughs> and Maurice has to uh, to like discipline his adopted son. <laughs> oh man, these clips of old fights of all these dudes like bull rushing with their arms. Yes. Oh, yeah. The defensive footwork is just astounding. <laughs> oh my god! Also, want a highlight of the dude just be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Waving my arm is basically the same as punching. <laughs> and hey, we were in the Trump Taj Mahal. Oh, nice. Classy. This is where it all began. <laughs> yeah. Strong bond gonna get between our, our, our president-in-chief and the, the president-in-chief of the UFC. I wonder if we're going to get a shot of Donald in the crowd somewhere. Yeah, there's Frank Shamrock, though, in his corner. So, still pure Lions Dan era, Maury Smith. Yeah. <clears throat> is trained in ground defense. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Why is it justified so weirdly? Look at the spacing. <laughs> is trained <laughs> in That's actually the spacing for all of them. Defense. You just don't notice it because that's the yeah. one that's the full sentence. Yeah. yeah. Why are the spacing so big? Ah. Uh. Oh man, I'm so ready for this. The tribal tattoo. Mo I cannot stop him at thinking that Mo Smith looks like a dad. He really, really <laughs> does. Oh, it's gonna be good. And one of the old trashy mustache. logos as well. Mm -hmm. That like generous helping of chest hair that says that I'm more manly than you could ever be. Right. Disappointing son. Yep. Oh. oh boy! See, I do what love they, this. I, what, I do love seeing classic Bruce Buffer and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, this so young. Bruce Buffer would never be so that young. To wear a completely black tuxedo at, a, at one of today's UFC events. L looking very a, a lot less like an old leather saddlebag. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, looking less like he's been dealing with 30 years of like not being as hot as his brother Michael. Like that's oh. that, that's that's the, the that's just the internal struggle. All right, I'm not saying that Bruce isn't as hot as Michael. All right, they're both hot. <laughs> they're both hot. That, they're both that, very hot. I'm glad you qualified. We had to watch that. bad MMA. Yeah, not not to start controversial. <laughs> Who's the better looking buffer? 
<laughs> well, I, I kind of now I kind of want to know who would be upset about me saying that, <laughs> right? Like I have to know what does it say I, about a the person that they would get upset by me saying Bruce Buffer isn't hot. I, I've always I, I I have always enjoyed Bruce Buffer's commentary, but he has some like he he has some very defensive like anybody that's been with the UFC. Ready? For okay, a long okay. Round one goes now. No, no, no. Oh, it just started. Okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, this is this is still the era of like white power world fucker UFC logo. Yeah, <laughs> where it's just this huge bald like you know weirdly I don't know just weird symbol that's always got a world like a globe right in its crotch that it's grabbing. Yeah. I remember the one on the, it, this is an upgrade from like the first, from whatever that one was, you know, in the really early, where it was, he was like, had the, he was like holding his fist out or something. And it, he, he really was mm-hmm. like, you know, the world was right in front of him. Yeah. So has new metal been invented? That's the question. <laughs> like, oh, definitely. I think, oh, yeah. I think, we're, I we're think Dana we're White we're only, we're Dana White only realized he liked MMA because new metal was a part of it. <laughs> mm. Since we now we have confirmed proof that Dana White is the reason for Face the Pain and every other STEM song that the UFC uses to this day, because Dana White is a bona fide fan of new metal. That's what kind of guy Dana White is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, I was so this too is- when I was in high school, but that was high school. <laughs> new metal to was- be funny. I was so much I cooler find it than amusing. in high school, Zane. I was like, so much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I well, never yeah, thought I, that was cool. I, I, that, that just means that I've had a lot of room to grow since, and you are, uh, you know. Uh. Yeah, I've actually gone, I've gone reverse. Like, I was listening to, like, Tame Impala in high school before they existed, but now I listen to STEM. Yeah, there you go. Now I wake up every day to face the pain as my alarm. So, so Bob, we've got a nice takedown, mm. and... Uh, uh, that's our fight so far. How uh, I'm, It's hard to tell right now. I wish there was some graphic to let me know whether or not Maury Smith has trained in defensive grappling. Because yes. mm. it doesn't look like it. <laughs> I mean, he's answering the phone with an arm inside, <laughs> inside the phone. What was he trying to do? <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> he was trying to trap Babalu's arm against his head? What was yes. the goal there? Just like, just now, just get it around my neck a little more, okay? <laughs> Answering the phone is not a defense to everything. He blocked some shots with it there, so that maybe that yeah. was the idea. Oh, he's done something. No, he's not. <laughs> so this is this, <laughs> this is also, I think, that this is the first event with uh, the unified rules, right? Hmm. Could be. Somebody should look that up. I believe so, yeah. 28? Is it the first Zuzu um, event? Might be. Was it, was uh, it like 27? Uh, yeah, UFC, UFC 28 marked the first UFC event to be sanctioned by a new JS state and the uh, hell no, the new, newly formed Unified Rules of Mixed Martial Arts. Nice. All right, so this is our first mo- one of our first modern MMA bouts. Yeah, we are watching modern oh, no, this is the, yeah, MMA. This is, this is the last... This is the last uh, oh. SEG event. Mm. Okay. All right. Which, Which explains the, the, the white power world fucker logo. Yeah. Effect. Although yeah, he, they, now he's yeah. weight cut. So you notice he's got this belt that's like cinched really tight. And you can see mm-hmm. like the, the ribs all showing around it. So it's. Yeah, that would be incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> like. <laughs> he's corseted. <laughs> yeah. It's. It, it's a, it's a world title girdle. <laughs> world, world title spanks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm wearing, I'm wearing, I get to wear the championship spanks. To, to, you know, keep the gut in a little bit. Oh, man. So, Bob Lou is such a... He, Bob Lou is such a core, like, early 2000s Zufa era UFC fighter. Oh, 100%. Just yep. the terrible tattoos. Shoes a guy who would still obviously wear shoes if he could have all career. 
Yep. I will say, I mean, he's he's doing it like his method is to not do anything so that he doesn't get caught. But Mari Smith is at least defending himself from anything really bad happening. Yeah. No, he's um, surviving. He hasn't I mean, made that's... one attempt to escape or stand, but. Nope, he's just got that leg cinched up. Which means almost certainly that in round two, Babalu is going to hit an instant takedown and it'll look exactly like this round. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's a replay that shows this fight. Not a good sign for Mo. His 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 large son is beating the shit out of him as we speak. It's true. This is this is like when dad's used to like totally owning his kid the whole all grown up. And then one day he comes yeah. in late and he's like, I'm gonna teach you a lesson and like not no not anymore. And his son instantly takes him down and holds him there for five minutes. <laughs> right. yeah. What an amazing family drama that would be. Yes. <laughs> This, uh, this this whole event is just family drama. At first, it was Henry Hooft fighting his ex-wife's new lover, uh, <laughs> and now we've got uh, <laughs> we've got Mo Smith losing a fight to his upstart adopted son. You gotta love too the yeah. SEG era when all the lo- whatever venue they were in provided the ring girls, so you were always just getting like this weird amalgamation of people who. You know, it's either if you're lucky, it's boxing ca- ring card girls, mm-hmm. or if you're not, it's just whatever woman happened to live in the area. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, I like the expression on White Power Guy's face. I haven't really, you can't really see it on the logo, but you can definitely <laughs> see it on like the one on the floor. Look at how just like well, look at how flatly determined he is. He kind of looks he he looks kind of circumspect to me, like. <laughs> Somebody's making a pitch to him, and he's not convinced by it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> he may just be thinking, like, I think he's trying to look hard, but he's he's merely just, oh, like, man. quite upset by how, like, how much his corset is restricting his <laughs> yeah. stomach. Uh, and and have, have you noticed, too, that, like, he he apparently only does bicep curls? He, like, only does bicep curls and... Uh, like chest presses, like flies, maybe because his forearms are really thin, but his ar- his upper arms are like monstrously yeah. huge. That's the training regimen for this era, man. It's just curls in the squat rack, <laughs> and eight, curls in the squat rack, and no strand alone. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, he does have an expression. He has an expression of like a a very insecure man, like making his first visit to a proctologist and really really like look at his face he's trying to do he's trying to have the least gay reaction he can to what's <laughs> happening to him that is that expression <laughs> i'm still a man i'm still a man <laughs> oh yeah. man. meanwhile Mabalu is on top of him <laughs> let me Morris go to the Smith. limp biscuit concert dad morris smith no. before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Going to the fucking concert, Dad. Babalu is just whispering the lyrics to "Crawling in My Skin" into Mo Smith's <laughs> ear right now. Yeah, he uh, Mo Smith almost fell down before Babalu actually attempted a takedown. They tied up in a clinch, and he almost just fell over, and then he barely recovered his footing, and then Babalu just like Hit lightly the- wrapped his leg around his leg, yeah. and he just fell right over. His takedown yeah. defense is abysmal. Definitely. Yeah, he was the like the first sprawling brawler, but uh, trained in uh, wrestling skills. Yeah, yeah, he was the first sprawling brawler, but he really didn't have any sprawl. He was, yeah, just, just slightly more conditioned than. I I have a feeling, like honestly, the fact that that Babalu is tying up and then taking him down is probably like something he has had not prepared for at all. Oh yeah, I think Barry Smith had like, like. Bad single yeah. and double leg shots. Yeah. That were bad shot from anything. long range. Yeah, he, he 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 can stuff a bad shot from long range, but as soon as Babalu ties up, he's like, uh, he's just waiting to get taken down. Yep. Answer the phone, Mo. <laughs> Come on. You've got his arm in the right position. <laughs> oh, my God. He just... That was like a Mark Kerr style hammer fist. <laughs> just, just pure brawn. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling bad for Murray Smith at this point. They said before at the start he's 38 at this point in time. Yep. Also, but like so we were mentioning how we were mentioning how Logo Guy's arms like taper oh. 
And like, has anyone noticed like the vast discrepancy between Babalu's thighs and his calves? That is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, it really is. Look at that. It, you want to say he skipped leg day, but he didn't because but, like he didn't. He did half of leg day somehow. <laughs> what what exercises are those? It looks like his legs his legs have been legs have been Frenched. Like when you take a <laughs> take a wing and you take the meat off the bottom to make it look nice and presentable. Some chef has Frenched Babalu's calves. <laughs> yeah, he kind of does he's got like people say chick when people say chicken legs, they they generally mean like, you know, they have stuff he like you know uh, Yeah. But like no, he has like actual like chicken legs, like, like tons drumsticks. of meat on the thigh. <laughs> yeah, yes. he had, actually had drumsticks. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's going to need to cover those calves in some tribal tattoos so nobody notices. Yeah. This Frank Shamrock saying, "Answer the phone, Mo. Answer the phone." <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello? <laughs> That's what Mo thinks answering the phone is just how you listen to your coach. What? Hello? Is this the box office? I want to cancel two tickets that my son booked under my name for Papa Roach. God damn it, Dad! <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> the idea of him doing that in the fight and then Babalu still can't really be any more effective <laughs> he just has to sit in his car doing nothing just oh could God. have choked him out I still could have gone to see the new yes. metal stylings of yeah. Jacoby Shaddix yes I remember his name well, oh. who is that I'm pretty oh, sure that's God. the Papa Roach guy. Oh my God, that he has a name. Yeah, I think that's his name. I think it's Jacoby Shaddix. Papa Roach is absolutely. I usually hate when people do this, but he is. I have absolutely been convinced, without even thinking about it, that that is just his name. Uh, like it's yeah. like when people think the guy from Jethro Tull is named Jethro Tull. He <laughs> mm. really thought that his name was Papa Roach. No, I just assumed it was a stage <laughs> name. I didn't think it was his given name. I just never even occurred to me. way better if it was his actual one. name. Yeah, it never <laughs> occurred to me that he might have a normal person's name. Is, is Papadopoulos <laughs> W. Roach? Yeah. But it's. <laughs> 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 I just like him, like going to the DMV. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm Papa Roach. Is my my wife uh, Mama Roach? Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's a distant cousin. Just, he just like acclaimed boxing, you know, boxing trainer Freddie Roach. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the long lost, the long lost, uh, yeah, the, the 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 kind of scattered Roach family. <laughs> well, the pop, Papa awesome. call, Papa calls him cousin, <laughs> as they do. Cousin Roach. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. So Maury Smith has finally gotten the fight he wanted. He's gotten Babalu to trade strikes with him for a bit, and he hasn't won the exchanges, and he he can't really throw because he thinks Babalu might take him down. So it's yeah. like, and and Babalu's kickboxing is uh, about what you'd expect of a guy who yeah. primarily grapples and wrestles. I mean, he's landed some good shots just because I think Mo is so concerned about the takedown. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not uh, not exactly complex. And see, there's the shot Mo was prepared to kind yeah. of never mind. But the chain wrestling, the thing is, it was a bad shot and yep. he stopped it, and then just a little bit of chain wrestling put him down. Yeah. Oh my god, he needs to get where is that fucking phone? <laughs> this child has got uh, he's to going for it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this child has got to learn his the lesson. Thing is, <laughs> the thing is, that uh, like maybe Mo could have. The thing is, Mo. This was obviously like Mo could leg kick people, but he. This was before the era of like the calf leg kick. If he mm. could have like, if he'd known about those, he might he might have been able to like sever. But uh, as it stands, like if he'd thrown a leg kick, it would have ended up on the actual meaty part of yes uh, Babalu's thigh, where he could actually absorb shots there. But it might it probably would have been devastating if you could kick lower than that. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's really weird to think, though, that because I mean, like, you know, it's not like Marie Smith was not a very good kickboxer at one point. Yeah. I, was that just not part of kickboxing in the past? Maybe not. I don't know. No, I, there's a lot of novel techniques that I think uh, are, have been introduced by MMA. Like, I've not seen calf kicks really in Muay Thai either. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe it's because people are just a lot better at checking, so it's not worth going for something so close to the shin. Yeah, yeah. And, and in MMA, people don't really check kicks even to this day. So maybe that has something to do with it. <clears throat> but I've not I've not really seen calf kicks as a standard uh, part of most kickboxing sports. Is it just me, or is it a little weird that Babalu has red nose printed in huge letters on his butt? <laughs> it is. It is odd. I'm it's not beer, sure right? what that is. It's a beer, I think. Maybe, well, maybe he's actually like just a really big fan of classic British charities. So yeah, yeah. I was thinking like he's he could just be like this is a really obscure like oh, no, way no. of contributing to one I of our. I know, and this is why Marie Smith is upset. It's an obscure reference to Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why yeah. Mo is so yeah. upset. He's part of the Red Nose Gang. Is like a tribute band <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> An insane clown. Doubles for life, Dad. <laughs> I think I think my personal hell would be made up of insane clown posse tribute bands, like <laughs> <laughs> just over, just over and over. Just like you know, people who don't quite know all the words to the songs and like are even more into the like the get up than ICP is and. Wait, is Tito commentating? Oh my yeah, god, he might be. We are missing Tito out. Has, <laughs> Tito has like been a clearly been like this phantom presence in Bubble fights. You know, there's this, and there's obviously you know the best light heavyweight on the night. Oh so yeah, we are Bubbly. missing out on Tito's commentary. Not listening to that. What does he? What does he call? What does he think his first name is? Seraldo. <laughs> Seraldo Babalu. <laughs> oh, that's one of the best. Uh, this is this is one of the only times I've genuinely been sad that we can't hear the commentary because yeah. Tito is a fucking gem on the mic. Oh yeah. Like, Man, uh, what a fight. He is a literal Ben Stiller character in real life, like one yes. of those dodgy yeah, type. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm now sad that we didn't get to hear that. Yeah, now, we we should find one of the events where they let Tank uh, Tank Abbott commentate and then listen to <laughs> listen to that. That happened. They they did it multiple times and it was amazing because the <laughs> UFC hated Tank Abbott. Like they just could not stomach him, but he was their big star at the time, so they had to kind of they were and you know this is like after Gracie dropped out. And they were trying to find somebody Tank, to attract attention. Tank Abbott was their Conor McGregor. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was as close as they could get to having a relevant... That is insane. <laughs> because they, well, they couldn't pay... You know, they were losing so much pay-per-view revenue from mm-hmm. all the places shutting them down that they couldn't pay people to stick around. So, you know, they'd get a guy like Dan Severn or they'd get a guy like uh, Mark Coleman or any of those guys and they get them for a couple of fights and then they just go to Japan and yeah. fight over there. And tank Abbott was, you know, one of the few dudes who was willing to stick around and keep fighting and assault people in hotels. And as you did. Yeah. How many Trump Taj Mahal billboards could you possibly need inside the Trump Taj Mahal? <laughs> like, like, for the love of God. Yeah. Also, is anyone else digging the way that, like, when they've had the occasional like transition and screen wipe, it's been it's been world fucker like his his crotch just <laughs> yes. flying out of the screen or flying <laughs> back in again? Like, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh. The UFC version of the Batman transition. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh my god. Man. Uh, Red Nose is apparently, I will tell you what their website is because it still exists, rednoseusa.com, Extreme Sports, spelled with an X. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a very confusing website, but it is not a beer. It is just an MMA brand, basically. I, I feel like, you know, at this point, it would almost be more counterculture to, like, try spelling extreme, like, 
ECS. <laughs> like, mm. yeah, go the, the way. go the Russian anglicized route. Do E E K S. Yeah, extreme. Extreme. there we go. There we go. <laughs> Gotta jazz it up a little for these new yeah. kids today. All right, you guys ready oh for Tyron Woodley versus Wonder Boy Two? <sighs> Don't ask no, you have I'm seen really online. not. Okay, uh, we're gonna jump right in on this. Starting in three, two, one, go. Oh god. I hate this fight so fucking much. <laughs> I think I hate this fight more than any other fight. It is it is the worst fight. It, it, I love it. I actually kinda love it because it came on the like it, it is the exact repeat of the first fight. With with the like idea that everybody's like, well, you know, they're gonna have learned stuff and take stuff away and come back with like new tools and they'll be different. And nope. Here's a Not nice happening. contrast yeah. to the uh, different clothes that Bruce Buffer is wearing now compared to the last video we saw. He comes marching out confidently yeah. in like, some really shiny blue blazer. Like, what the fuck, Bruce? Have some respect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have some dignity. But anyway, hey, I. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I maintain I'm I'm now one of the few people who has not done an about face on this, uh, or who wasn't saying it at the time and has maintained the position that the first fight was a good fight, um, even though the dynamic absolutely did not change at all. The second fight was just the first fight, if none of the opportunities had been taken advantage of at all. And I think Bill, there was Bill enough. I have the same expression uh, on this this pitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As yeah, the, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, a thing you can say, Connor. That's that is a feeling for you to have. Look, I I know I'm not the only person who enjoyed the first fight as it was playing out. Many people enjoyed it, but now everyone seems to say, "Oh, the first fight was just as bad as the second one." The second one was the first fight. If I don't know, like, um, what's like a slow movie that pays off versus like what you could change one detail. And it just doesn't come to the climax, and so then the movie's terrible. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, no, Zane. Zane is clearly the guy to to think of this, and now he's just going to be stuck there for the next twenty minutes trying to figure <laughs> out what the fuck. Tom is well done, Connor. You you've frozen him. <laughs> yeah, he's done yeah, now. He's done. That, okay, let's okay. Let's talk about this shitty ass fight some more while Zane tries yeah. to struggle to think of the appropriate like check. This. The appropriate yeah. check film from 1953. Yeah, shouldn't have mentioned <laughs> movies. There, there is, um, there is no argument yeah. whatsoever that this is a terrible fight. No, uh, but is, like, it I, but it is the like, it's got moment, it's got moments in it. Like, it's got the moment in the fifth round where stuff happens, and there's a yeah. moment in another one of the rounds. Like, the both both fights have exactly two moments where Tyron Woodley does something. It's just and that somehow, both the same. somehow all the drama is sucked out of this one. It's it's so it's so predictably bad that none of the things that happen are exciting like, in the slightest. But the first one is terrible if you go back and look at it. If you go back and watch it, then it, it would be a terrible. You know, it's like That's these quite fights possible. where they're like, you, they've got this kind of gunslinger tension, yeah, to them, and then you can go. You know, like we I think we talked about this with like, uh, home Tate would probably be pretty terrible. If you look back at it, but when it, at the time people were like, oh, because oh, like you know, I was yeah. I was uh, the thing I, is I, I was a little drunk when Home Tate was going on live, so I distinctly recall being bored, like <laughs> for portions of that fight. I wasn't really excited for the last two rounds until the finish. So okay, it was I, I've, found, I, I've thought of the the comparison. Oh, okay. Which would be, which would be it would be to the Brood most likely. Which if you, mm. I don't know that either of you've seen it. Here comes but, uh, here comes our round one. By the way, sorry, Zane. Uh, Round one begins now. It would be the brood, which really only pays off because of the big reveal at the end. And the movie's like, it's an amazing movie because of that reveal. But if you don't have the reveal at the end, then it would just be like child dwarves are killing people yeah. with hammers. But somehow the first fight I, even makes this one worse. Yes, it makes this yeah. one worse because. You would thought that they would have learned. Yeah, it's yeah. like coming out. It's like coming out with the brood. It's like you make the brood, and then you make the brood two, and it's basically the same thing, but without the part that made the first one good. 
Yeah. Like somehow they have managed to remove all the drama and interest. Like all the, there's a very fine line between tense and boring. Uh, and like yeah. only one little thing has to be shifted for a, for a long silence to become dull rather than, you know, edge of your seat interesting. And I just didn't find this fight yep. to be, this, this fight was like back of the seat. I need to take a nap. This was not interesting in the slightest live. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, it's so. How many totally unchallenged sidekicks can Stephen Thompson throw in this fight? Like a lot. The, the Tyron Woodley <laughs> never finds a way to solve. Never finds a way to get around. Like, I just hate this fight so much. It's so <laughs> bad, and I hated the first one. And I, I emailed you and you and Patrick saying that they should have been that neither of them should have gotten the belt. Up, like they should have just <laughs> vacated the belt after the first fight, let alone being allowed a rematch. Just give the belt it's just so to bad. <laughs> they're so ath- they're so athletic. They're so talented. Like yeah. a lot of the time, we watch terrible fights, and they're terrible fights because the people in them are terrible. And yeah, it's frustrating. And, you know, they, they just can't so strike. Is that they? They're just not strong. Yeah, they're just. We see bad striking battles between bad strikers. We see bad wrestling from bad grapplers, and like these two guys are, you know, physically in. You know they're amazing athletes, kind of top top end. I think maybe I think Wonder Boy is maybe slightly starting to fade out from being a top end athlete. He's no longer able to do 180 degree backflips after winning fights. I think he's he's been yeah. fighting for a long time, but like still, they've got lots of depth of skill. They've been training for a long time, and they've both fought this guy in front of them that has obvious fucking glaring flaws in his game. And they've both come in with the strat, and they've they've had, and their strategies when they've come in are just like, well, this guy sucked at leading, so I'm not gonna lead. I'm just gonna wait for the right hand, whether it's the straight or the hook, and that's it. I hate this fight. Yep. Hate yeah. it. That's the thing, man. The the first fight really reinforces that it makes it all the more frustrating because. The first fight, not only did it have those moments, but there were opportunities for more moments. There were things to correct. There were yep. things. That's why like, I was very optimistic and hopeful. I was like, man, there's so many things they can both do to adjust to what happened based on what happened in the first fight. And instead, they just had a flatter version of the first fight. It, it especially seemed to me like there were th- a lot of things Tyron Woodley could have done to adjust. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because Thompson, like... But Thompson too, man. Like, you got a guy backed into the fence. I know you yeah. don't want to catch the right hand, but you don't have. You didn't work on like any more consistent ways of keeping the pressure on him and and touching him up to set him up for a big shot. Like, yeah, he, you can't. You really can't do anything unless he lunges after you, and he does it so infrequently that that strategy won't work because then you can't time the lunges. Like, yeah, it's just yeah. a self defeating plan from both of these guys. I mean, he just landed a left straight on Woodley. And, like, Woodley has not been invulnerable to left hands, like, in no. his career. Let's let's say that. Like, but he just doesn't want to because he's like, oh, it takes me too, it's too difficult for me to cover the distance for me to hand, land my left hand. So I'm just going to see if I can wait and catch him with the right hook. And it's just too dangerous. And, like, like Maya landed multiple left hands on Oh yeah, Tyron plenty Woodley. of really good ones. More than Thompson and, did in this fight, by yeah. far. I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm gonna say at a guess. I think Stephen Thompson has probably a better left hand <laughs> than Damian, Damian Maya does. Like maybe. Oh no. Has anyone ever said, uh, "Oh, now we're looking at K1 Stephen Thompson"? <laughs> you, can, you can say that. It's true. He doesn't have world class kickboxing. Well, he. I mean, he is undefeated, like fifty and zero kickboxer. So mm-hmm. clearly, world class. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Possibly the greatest striker ever. Possibly. Like, I hope Lucas yeah. is watching this. Thompson made some headway there. He's working on his jab. He's got a lot of pressure on. But it's like and it only happens in the last ten seconds of a round, and then it's and then every round is a reset with these two. So every round is like any s- slight bit of progress you made in the previous frame, just evaporates and you start from square one. And square one is terribly yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah. Fittingly, however, my dog for this fight has chosen to adopt the <laughs> proper posture. So she yeah. she will, she's helping a company with like a gentle snore in the background. <laughs> you have good taste, Molly. <laughs> Unlike us. 
Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. So like, why can't Stephen Thompson just like push? Why can't Stephen Thompson throw a jab? Why can't he just? What's I never see in like these fights what the risk of Stephen Thompson throwing his sidekick is. I know the risk of throwing a sidekick is that it gets parried and you get decked. Because this has happened to like... Well, he got, but like, he got it taken never down happens. off a sidekick. I think in the first fight when he got taken down, it was off a sidekick. Or maybe it was a low kick. It was a, round, it, was a leg, it was a round kick to the leg. Yeah, you might be right. A, a I don't think it was a push kick. Like, the, the, the risk is one of the, It's one of the safer strikes to, like, to not get your kicks caught. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's just the fact that if it gets pushed to the side, you've basically given them sort of, you know, that terrible death angle yeah. where you, you basically got the plane of your body across their, their, their cross. So, but like, he never even tries it. Well, he barely tries it. Like, why doesn't Woodley just push him back with, like, a jab and then kick him in the leg? Just do the Shogun thing. Like, no one tries anything. <laughs> <laughs> no one tries anything. It's exactly the description of this. It, it's 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 multi-level chess, Phil. You're you're fretting here, but they're disrupting MMA. Mm-hmm. Tenth oh, dimensional yeah. chess. Uh, oh, sorry, it's MMA, so it's actually tenth dimensional checkers. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh Lord. Yeah, this is. It, these are the worst kind of fights to me because, you know, it, it's that idea of like fighting without any idea of how you're going to win the fight at all. Yeah. 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 Right. It's completely aimless. Like we, Zane, you and I always say the phrase, what are you doing to win the fight at this moment? Or yeah. a paraphrase of that. And you, you just bafflingly ask yourself this question over and over during this fight like what is your plan right now what's the goal what's the like that that thing that just did or did not happen how are you using that to change the way that you approach the next exchange it's just it's and this it's, is it's gsp's just, division this is gsp's belt you know yeah. he the innovator the great like you know he was on the cutting edge of like mma for you know all those years that he held the belt and 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 just this yeah. Oh. You know what fight I didn't mind that much? I didn't mm. mind Maya Woodley. No, no, because me Woodley was winning the fight really easily, and that was a fine strategy. And you know, there was no doubt about who won pretty much any round, and he won really easily. But and yet, Maya it was wo- boring. But I wasn't like, this is boring and and stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and yet, Maya was still somehow more game. Than Stephen Thompson, even though he had less success than Thompson had in either of their two fights, like objectively he won fewer rounds, but he was he still gave the impression of wanting to win the fight more, yeah, or of being less willing to let his fear of the consequences stop him from winning the fight. Oh, uh, Woodley almost landed a right hand in there. Uh, yeah, I think he I think did he land it. Oh, uh, he uh-huh. did he? I don't know. It looked like if he did, it, it didn't land with much power. Like Woodley is so freakishly fast. Like, yeah. that's, the, that's one of the one of the more annoying things about him is that he's just like I, I still I just don't think I just don't like I don't think Woodley has a good style. I think he's improved no. it a lot in a lot of ways. His footwork is a ton better. He's you know gotten much better at taking small like small steps, and making sure his feet aren't out of position, and kind of timing his rushes. But it's just a bad style. It's just and it's he gets bailed out because he's a freak athlete. Yeah, it is very much the kind of style that is not replicable to other fighters. That mm-hmm. if you try to like downscale it to somebody else, you end up with uh, oh, uh, yeah, what's the uh, shit? I always do this. Who's the guy who fought Darren Till last? Bojan, Bojan Veliskovic. Mm. Oh, yeah. You end up with Boyan Veliskovic versus Darren Till, where Veliskovic is like waving Till in. He's like, "Yeah, come on, come and get me." And Till just like nails him with an elbow and drops him. Oh, that is yeah. kind of the far end of the speed spectrum from Tyron Woodley. <laughs> it is, but I mean, that's relatively, you know. It, no, he's you, very. Tyron Woodley just threw a body punch. I know. He just landed a right straight to the body. Maybe that's a better target. No, well, you know what? Maybe we should just. 
let the last 30 seconds of the round eclipse not yeah. throw that punch again or you know like not use the threat of it to establish an well okay well I would still say that like the uh, best way to d- define whether a style is good and functional is to down to to downgrade it to like the worst possible athlete. Oh yeah, how they do with no, it. Phil, yeah. Phil, yeah. Phil's belief that I have totally subscribed to since he said it to me is that like journeymen are interesting because they're usually the the elite fighter styles without the athleticism. So you get a much better idea of how the style works. Yeah, than a journeyman when it's expressed at in, in, in a journeyman level than it is when it's expressed by someone like Tyron Woodley, who is like a phenomenal athlete. Yeah. Yep. Bear, it didn't really land. That was that right hand that we saw yep. before. It kind of grazed his nose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing is that, is that, I mean, we've already seen Woodley's style get pretty comprehensively solved. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, if you see styles, if you see styles, like that just collapse at mid level, it's just basically, you, know, you see, can see that style sort of replicated up the division. It's basically that this guy is, you know, you can't you can't have a style which relies on you having a huge athletic advantage over people because some at some point you're gonna you're gonna encounter like a Komaru Usman or something who's like who has like a a pressure style and just doesn't. Uh, that's just some disadvantages against you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can. It's just, it's just that, about, you know, that's that's what kind of functional styles are. They're things which minimize the ability to kind of be checkmated by and minimize the ability and, you know, don't rely on just being able to, because there's no style which doesn't work. Yeah. There's no style, you know, you could be a guard grappler and if you were than anyone you could still do that you could still you know you can every style works with enough athleticism to supercharge it yeah no no question i mean you you see you see something like brian ortega where it's just like the style is get hit a lot and then Mm -hmm. slap slap a submission on people when they get tired of punching you and have some good kickboxing coming back at them and it's like yeah if you have enough athleticism and durability you can make that style work yeah, or you can transfer it to Jason Knight against Ricardo Lamas and watch him get brutally knocked out. Yep, phase change has made the fight momentarily interesting. That's right. Maybe I will say one thing: take down the third round. I'll say another thing for Tyron Woodley: his ground and pound is so much better than it used to be. Oh yeah, yeah. like he is so much more of a threat from top position than he used to be. Mm-hmm. Like he beat the shit out of. First fight from top position, and he, you know, he does a match here. Is, he's getting some good shots in here. He's got some nice little short yeah. left to the body and a few to the 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 cheek temple area of Thompson. Like he's, yeah, he's he's, 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 he's so he's inactive from top. But he's, yeah, he's this is one of the areas where I'm genuinely truly impressed with how much he's developed. He's being forced to keep a very low defensive posture just to hold on to the position, but he's still getting off some decent shots. Yeah. I mean Thompson too. Like he's putting up a sustained fight to get back to his feet here. Oh yeah. He's not. He's not allowing Woodley to posture up in any way. Oh, nice knee. And back against the fence. Yep. <laughs> like a brief, even a brief moment of interest only gets a boom hour. Sort of uh, acknowledgement from <laughs> from Zane. Yeah. So, so much has the fight crushed his morale. Well, yeah, it's just you know, it is. It it, it really does yeah. suck to see. Like, and, and it's one of those things that I was actually thinking about this not long ago too, about how and I was thinking about this when I was watching tape on some fights for uh, the last UFC event to do our Vivi, and I realized that like it's actually really hard to scout fighters well from UFC fights. I like to mm. scout a fight well from UFC tape rather, because invariably you almost always only get to see a cut down version of a fighter's game in each fight they're in because the level of competition is so good. Yeah. I kind of wonder too, if at some point the, the UFC's 
their way of matching fighters up in this long, slow, like, you got to fight everyone and it's going to take forever and it's going to be all these really hard fights. Whether it's just sort of like, not only do you end up seeing, like, when you're watching tape, do, do fighters get parts stripped out of their game in terms of what you can see on film? So you're like, oh, okay, you know, I have no idea how their wrestling is going to match up because this fighter hasn't been able to wrestle functionally in his last three bouts. But I also kind of wonder if at some point, too, some fighters don't just end up actually getting parts of their game stripped out altogether by fighting in the UFC in, like, all, only these really high-level bouts. Steven Thompson is doing what he actually should have been doing. He landed a few straight lefts to the body in the last minute. He went upstairs. He's still incapable against Tyron Woodley of thinking past the first shot he lands. Yeah. But he's getting in the left hand of the body. Yeah. He's made he has made an adjustment. Oh, and Tyron Woodley cracked him. I think like I might be a few seconds ahead of you guys. So when round you, you four are. When round four my yeah. video skips a little bit sometimes. So when round four starts, um, you guys just let me know when it starts and I'll rejoin you. Or just Pause it for two seconds and you'll be fine. Maybe three. What, what are you guys at right now? I'm at 23, 22, 21, okay. 20. Yeah, I'm, like 10, I'm like 10 seconds ahead. Let me, oh. let me know when you're at 10 seconds left in the round. 5, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. Right. Even there, like, oh, see, like this kind of stuff, I can't imagine why Stephen Thompson would be so worried about like having the sidekick parry to side or whatever, because Woodley is not actually a great counter puncher. Like it's no, he, he, he leads when he's doing his best work. He yeah. Tends- he, he bursts at you, but like, he's not really like his defense is kind of separated from his offense. So even if he is defending these shots, he's not usually great at turning that immediately into a counter. So like the, your best bet is to do what yeah. Rory McDonald did and just overload him with information, keep the pressure on, give him volume to work with. And it is baffling that Rory McDonald did that so comprehensively and Stephen Thompson hasn't doesn't seem to have picked up any of those strategic <laughs> concepts. Even like again, like Rory McDonald beat beat Tyron Woodley with a style that Stephen Thompson absolutely could replicate. Yeah, I wonder about that, though, too, because I I think it's also one of those things where, like, if you think about most of Thompson's best... Up round four starting for Connor. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm back on with you guys. He's back in line. He, we synced up with him. It's, hey, oh, okay. Uh, but I, I kind of think, like, I think back to a lot of Stephen Thompson's best striking performances, and they usually involve somebody who is really willing to aggressively engage him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just about anyone yep. who has not engaged really aggressively, the fight has just slowed to a crawl. So is that does that then give more of an excuse for Tyron Woodley's approach to this fight? Like he's so timorous about coming forward because Thompson's counterpunching is like his best moments against Johnny Hendricks and, and even Roy McDonald were counterpunches. Yeah, I mean, even his fight with Patrick Cote was just kind of a slow burn because Cote wasn't willing to bite on anything and really step forward. Yeah, Woodley's, Woodley's yeah. actually so, good I mean, when he comes the, forward, though. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, the thing is with um, with Thompson is that we we kind of thought he was he was substantially different from Machida because he <laughs> threw more volume. But the thing is that all that volume comes off, and it never comes off a lead. Yeah, it's always like you know he will he will wait for the right hook to land, and then we'll chain gun you with a bunch of other stuff if he's confident that nothing else is coming back his way. Mm. But in this fight, nothing is else is coming back his way, and he's only going to wait for. And you know that one counter shot that he needs to open everything up just doesn't come. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a smart performance from Tyron Woodley because you know all of Tyron Woodley's fights the same. He he's <laughs> he approaches everyone this way. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to fight Damian Maya this way, it's hard to say it's it's smart when you approach Stephen Thompson this way. Okay, but the last yeah. the last. The last three minutes of this fight have actually been mildly interesting to me. I'm willing to yeah. admit that. We've got yeah, some boxing been a lot exchange. More. Uh, Woodley has countered Thompson ooh, with his jab. Like They're trying to mix things up. They know nothing has happened, and it's the fourth round. I think they're both yeah, aware that this... they need to get some momentum on their side. But there's still well, such, like... There's still such... I don't know. I just don't see, like, either one of them as coming... has. 
neither one of them has come up with a strategic approach. Yeah. Yeah. To get in on the extremely flawed fighter they're fighting. It is like, like they have a great like, to They're just like, oh yeah, I need to do a bit more. Yeah. They're just yeah. like, I need to do a bit more now. And they're carrying on like, I need to do something that he's not quite ready for. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's like a very it's, you know, it's, it's the, the old. Yeah. It's the it's the I'm scared of getting countered. So if I open up with something, it's got to be weird. It's got to be you know. Mm. There's nothing. There's no building strike. There's no there's no like centerpiece to construct out from. It's just like they start. They just start doing a bit more when there's when they start working a bit more, and then they go back to the. To it is nothing. a it is a weirdly amateurish mindset that you can see from both of them. Like. The, this is that's how I feel when I've like not sparred in six months and I try to spar and I like instantly run out of ideas and like uh, maybe I'll try to do this thing faster. Uh, you know, like it's it's not at all what you would expect from both of these guys. That's why it's so frustrating. Like they just don't seem. It's like they can't they can't think outside the context of the awful fight they're having. <laughs> like how do I win other fights? How do yeah. how do I? It, it's adapt? really. I think it's just, you know, you really have a... It, it's the reason that I try not to put a lot of credit, and I often, you know, often to my own detriment when doing analysis, but I try not to ever really look at, like, oh, well, what's this guy do, say they're doing in camp, or what are they, mm -hmm. you know, say they're working on from their last fight and all that, is because at some point, most of that stuff doesn't appear. Like it just does not come across and people have modes and ways of fighting they get stuck into. And Stephen Thompson is not comfortable. He, he does not want to lead. And he, as he's become a more elite fighter, he's become even less somebody who wants to lead because he has mm -hmm. more on the line. Yeah. He knows, you know, that that is not a comfortable position for him to be in. And Tyron Woodley in the same sense, he has this style where he's just backs himself down and looks for opportunities to burst off the cage. And at an elite level, those opportunities are few and far between. And they're not, it's not an approach he's tailoring to everyone. Cause like I say, you know, you can't look at somebody approaching Damien Maya and Steven Thompson the same way and be like, Oh, well, you know, obviously he's really adjusting his, his strategy from fight to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I mean, so I think we were discussing this last week with um, Rashad and Nagara, which you sadly missed, Connor. Um, yeah. I'll never forgive it, myself. The idea that. That, yeah, the the idea that like I, I've never, I don't really hold with the idea that the hardest thing to do in like combat sports is to counter. I always feel like the hardest thing to do is to lead, mm -hmm. lead safely, like to be able to throw, and that's why you get a whole bunch of people get people who never learn how to lead mm -hmm. and Richard never learned how to lead and Woodley has never learned how to lead and how to lead because it if you don't lead the other guy is compelled to have a terrible fight with you mm -hmm. and, and it's like well then and they'll just be like shit well I'm frustrated and I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and throw but like Leading is hard, and that's one of the reasons why GSP was a you know he was a great champion because he was one of MMA's great leading fighters because mm -hmm. he could push back people back into the cage and that jab wasn't you know it was a move but it was also you know it was he would not rest wait he people criticized him for being boring but he would you know he would go out there and he would enforce his game mm -hmm. by throwing the best leading strike that he could and probably the best leading strike in the sport at the time. Yeah, I, I mean, I but can't think you know, of a round. People... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Good. I'm, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I was going to say, I can't think of a round of GSP's career that he did not actively try to win with a no. game plan he was pressing. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a... They, they can't think of a single round of GSP's career that wasn't proactive on his part. Yeah. Like yeah. he may have lost rounds yeah. kickboxing where somebody was able to land the better strikes than him, but it was never because he was trying not, he, he was just like not engaging them. Has Tyron Woodley yeah. thought about circling to his left for a few seconds? 
Maybe that would That's present a new territory, Connor. Maybe you that would know. present a, yeah. a new yeah, angle. Yeah, getting crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. you'll actually Maybe find like... that everything to the left of Tyron Woodley is lava, and so. <laughs> Yeah, he's being he's being he's slowly running away from a lava flow that is just rounding the ring after him. That's right. There's just like a ten foot space to his left that is always lava. Yeah, if he if he threw like a left hook into that space, his hand would catch fire. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> I swear that uh, Stephen Thompson he landed that left high kick in the last round. I think that was the first high left round kick he threw in the fight. And Why would you want to throw possible? a high left round kick against the man who only has a right hand? That doesn't make any sense, Connor. <laughs> How does that? That is baffling. What if he, like, what if he threw his deadly the left hand where a guy to got it? Hit with a with a, a kick while throwing a right hand, and he landed <laughs> the right hand though. So like, <laughs> oh yeah, he clearly watched his some tape on on that her man. Uh, <laughs> I've already forgotten his name. Wallace fight. Uh, <laughs> I think He's that was like, a right. Yeah, that was caught, a right high kick, right? Sure, a man caught Wallace. Yeah, with see, that, high see, that was because Rodney Wallace was standing southpaw, so that implies that Tyron Woodley would counter with his left hook. Uh, yeah, there you which go. We yeah, know it does not happen. Yeah, even though it's I mean, even thing, though like, Woodley's got a good jab and has a good left hook and does well coming forward, which he he only does any of these things for like twenty percent of the duration of any of his fights. Like <laughs> when Bisping for Henderson. This being fought Henderson the second time, like mm-hmm. a ton of what he did was just like stutter step and like lead right kicks. Yeah, shut the I right mean, hand down. Yeah, sorry, left kick, left kicks. Because you, yeah, you just got to hold it up there to block it. Like, and then where's his counter? If he, you're fighting a one-handed guy, like, what is the risk in throwing a left high kick? Is he yeah, gonna now- like? It's incredibly dangerous for him to him to do like a blast double into a left high kick because it might course. just. But Why now at this no point, like, have any strategic solutions in this fight? They're not subtle. They're not like they're not these like difficult things to figure out. Just they both came in just with plan they had last time, just with even less leading. It's the this it's the same plan, which now more and more it seems to be was no plan. Like it yeah. really does seem yeah. like neither of them had a clear strategy. It is amazing to think that they did this after twenty five minutes of fighting one another. Yeah. Right. Like shocking. It's yeah. not unusual that rematches are worse than the original fights, but the original fight had so much like empty space in which to plug in the improvements. Uh, it was such an improvable yeah. fight, even uh. in ways like beyond entertainment value. Like it could have been a less uh, like thrilling, like edge of your seat kind of fight, and still been a better performance from either of these guys. Yeah, and it wasn't. Like all I wanted to, all I wanted to see was someone win. <laughs> and no yes. one won. I just like, want to see someone win. I didn't even care who it was. Yeah. Like <laughs> I probably I think I blame I blame Stephen Thompson more. You know, Never a lot of people Stephen have Thompson blamed Tyron. Woodley. He didn't have a belt blame... around his waist. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a, yeah. It's a lot easier to justify that utterly defensive mindset, like what will happen if I do this when you're the champion. A lot of champions develop that. Of course we're saying this all just we we're, we're just right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the yeah one we're just talking the through the only <laughs> this whole way of just not showing any. We just no, watched stone faced as, as yeah, Woodley that's why this lands his. Because the first one had that kind of piece moment. Of offense every every ten minutes. The first yeah. one had that kind of moment, and it was super exciting. The second one had that moment. And it was like, oh, this already happened. I have seen this. It, it's lovely to watch yeah. Woodley crumple Thompson right there with the one left hook he threw all fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that was the plan. Oh like, man! Just lull him in for lull him in for forty eight minutes, and then right at the end, just when he's completely convinced that you only have one hand, just catch him <laughs> off guard. <laughs> oh, but true, man, a fight. true assassin waits for his moment to ply his advantage. It was off. There's the sidekick. So we got the sidekick. Oh no, we're just getting that? highlights of everything now. Here was it. Never mind. He actually got wobbled a bit by that left high kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he because because Tyron went for a level change at the same time. 
Yeah. It's, that's why the left high kick is like exactly the right thing you should be throwing against Tyron Woodley, especially during the portion of the fight when you still have him backing into the cage and before the end of the fifth round when he realizes he needs to come forward. Yeah, what's he going to do? Suckle away from it? Like, <laughs> right. Oh. He's going to circle directly into it over and over. And then oh. Woodley finally landing a couple rights and hurting Thompson. Hitting him on the back of the head here as he falls down, if I recall correctly. Or back of the head. Not that that's a foul, but <laughs> it's back not. Back of the head. I mean, well, that one might be. Yeah. Second one is. First yeah. one isn't. Why wasn't the first one a foul? Because if he's if he's falling into the strike, then it's, you know, no ref should be calling. Like, he didn't oh, throw sure. that aimed at the back of his head. Thompson fell. Thompson forward. turned away. Thompson turned yeah. away as he was throwing. Yeah. The second one where he's actually so like, down. Like if I anytime I ever see somebody grab the back of their head standing and try to claim a back of the head strike on themselves, like you're fucking standing there, dude. You have no like there is I mean no it does reason. rabbit punching does happen. There are fights I mean a lot more in boxing than MMA, I think, where people just deliberately hammer each other in the back of the head on the feet. Yeah, but MMA's back of the head rule is a lot less is a lot more liberal than boxing, I think, where like the yeah. back of the head's defined a lot less clear or more or less clearly mm-hmm. where like you really have to get somebody all the way in the back. Whereas boxing is kind of like anything that you're throwing up and behind from a clinch might be considered. Yeah. They say behind the ear. Um, although people do land un uh, unpenalized shots behind the ear all the time in boxing. Yeah. Dana talking to Dana talking to Stephen Thompson, like after the fight holding the bell, like, God, I wish I could give this to you. So <laughs> photogenic and white. And would solve so, many so much of my less than what he does. Right oh, Dana White, he's like, I hate this boring black bastard so much. Please, karate kid, just let me give you the belt. That Dana White should hate Stephen Thompson. Uh, that's, one, that's the one good that's the one good thing about this fight is that is how yeah. incredibly salty it must be Dana. That tyrant still gets like, to be a thorn in Dana's side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like and yeah, I, I definitely blame, you know, I have more blame for Thompson than I have for Woodley because it was largely a kickboxing fight and he is at yeah. least nominally supposed to be good at kickboxing and Woodley is supposed to be like someone whose background is wrestling and well, yeah. he did and, not. And, and Woodley uh, had a much better reason for being wary about coming forward than I think Thompson did. Like Thompson yeah. had was justifiably worried of the speed and the power and all that, but like who is who is more dangerous off the back foot of the two? It's definitely Stephen Thompson. As a counterpuncher, as a counterpuncher, yeah. it's definitely Stephen Thompson. Yeah, and Woodley, Woodley has had the only moments of the only moments of offense in both fights. Yeah, like, the only really had memorable like eight downs and two knockdowns, and that's it. Yeah, Thompson did, Thompson did land a head kick this time, so and, I guess that's an improvement. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> this will be the kind of so, thing yeah. to come back to in like four years when Stephen Thompson is on like some four fight run and can't get a title shot to save his life, <laughs> and somebody's like, "Oh man, they just need they need to give Thompson that title shot. He's earned it." And I'll be like, "Well, if Thompson wanted to be cut, <laughs> champ so bad, he should have won this fight." You know? Yeah. Yeah, or just I mean, these like, are that, again like three terrible ass fights that he's had. Yeah, <laughs> like. I mean, and that's the thing, is the fact that they were all one after the other that... Because when the Rory one came happened, people were like... People went, hmm, that was really interesting. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a great fight, but it was a really tense chess match. And then, like, the first Woodley-Thompson fight happened, and people went, yeah, it was, it was kind of a chess match, you know? It was, you know, it didn't much happen, but... <laughs> yeah, it was for tense. And then the third Woodley Thompson happens, and people are like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Garbage. Stephen Thompson, Stephen Thompson has had a truly Benson Henderson esque fall from grace. Like, good, no one else besides Ben Henderson has so dramatically gone from being like fan favorite action fighter to boring decision machine overnight. Yeah, but fans have oh, not I would take any, I don't think fans any... have realized it yet. We'll see after th- this. This Jorge Masvidal fight is going to be a real test they of don't, his boringness. Maybe they just don't ever realize yeah. it these days because, like, the only people still watching the UFC are like, That's true. <laughs> they have no critical thinking because these they, these are the people who also still think that Holly Holm is going to revolutionize MMA striking. 
that she's going to turn into some like technical boxing force. And they just won't listen. They just won't yeah. listen. <laughs> oh boy. Well, it started off like it was such a fun episode to start with. Yeah. Um, this was truly one of the worst fight would... we've watched. Like it I is, I, it's my most hate. It's not, it's not the worst fight we've watched, but it is definitely my most hated fight. Yeah, it's like, the most revolting. Like we watched Severn Shamrock, which was undeniably a fight with a lot less interesting action, but it what it didn't frustrate us. Like this fight just makes you unhappy when you watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, and I would like to say I would watch literally any Benson Henderson fight over this. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, many times over. <laughs> like, I enjoyed all of Ben Ben Henderson's uh, late championship run fights. They were all. I mean, I understood the disappointment, but this is this is so much more existentially yeah. frustrating than any of those were. Like at least Henderson Melendez was like truly competitive. Yeah, yeah. and I am not convinced by it. Like Jorge Masvidal is a guaranteed action fighter who is going to pull no. an amazing fight out of Steve Thompson. <laughs> the classic young like, veteran who drifts through fights that are reasonably yes. competitive. There is a massive yeah. chance that that fight is terrible. I'm praying yep. that it's good because I know it can be really good, but so could this fight. This fight could yeah. have been really good. Hopefully Masvidal is on, on his angry horse and is just like, I'm going to come out and fuck this guy up. But even then, when yeah. he's on that horse, the chances of him like landing five good shots in the first round and then being like, "Well, I don't have to do anything for the rest of the fight," is <laughs> yes. pretty high. Like, yeah. that or is- he's gonna land, he's gonna land like a bunch of stuff and look amazing, and then he'll just get hit by like a wheel kick, and then he'll just shut down for the rest of the fight. Why is Duke like, holding his finger directly over Dean Thomas's eyeball? <laughs> That was a strange frame to end the fight. <laughs> he was just his index finger lingering over Dean Thomas's eye. Very threatening. Yeah. Uh, and so I'd, I'd like to say that um, to anyone, anyone still with us, that we actually considered doing a Stephen Thompson only yeah, <laughs> depressed just us, doing the where we Donald fight that through both. Fight run. I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we didn't. <laughs> really glad we didn't. Oh, do man. Oh, it would have been oh my god every single one thing every single one of those was, was like would have been a 45 minute long video yeah <laughs> every single one of those the whole oh my god the episode would have been like two and a half hours yeah of yeah. steven thompson not doing anything yeah not expressly not kickboxing <laughs> <laughs> oh all right we've been crushed, uh, looking, we have been crushed. looking karate Looking very karate. <laughs> Looking very karate. All right. Karate. Yeah. On that note, then, let's wrap this up before we get too far down into the Stephen Thompson pathos here. You can find me on Twitter at these ain't time. You can find Connor on Twitter at Boxing Bush. That's B U S C H. And you can find Phil on Twitter at Evil Greg Jackson, just like the coach of Jackson Wink. You can find all three of us over at Bloody Elbow in our various roles. And uh, we will be back next week for Cerrone versus Till, UFC Gdansk, which I cannot help but look forward to that fight because Till is either going to get absolutely sunned or Cerrone is going to end up with a crushing loss that his ego may not be quite ready for. So either way... Should be a good time, and uh, you can. Until then, we'll be back. So we'll be back then with all our regular shows. Knuckle up if I did it. Care don't care. Heavy hands. Uh, and if the fights like, aren't interesting, John Anik is definitely going to have some interesting tidbits about how Gdansk used to be a basically the capital of the Hanseatic League. So there you go. Yeah. Many angles from which to get excited about this card. Hopefully they can bring DC back so Anna can throw some a little more shade, aka while live on air. <laughs> that was great. I do enjoy that. <laughs> That's right. far too hard. On that note, thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>